Okay, guys, I am so excited about this call tonight. Um, Brooke has been, she has been such an inspiration to me. I mean, just watching how um, amazing and fast she has grown her team, but it's beyond just the speed that she has grown her team that has caught my attention. Um, she has built such an incredible team of people that, um, I mean, their attrition levels are low. They are, their duplication is incredible. Their growth is organic and she is building a team of leaders that are just empowered. I sat through her training this past um, year at convention and she did the diamond breakout session and I was just so inspired leaving that um, training and she's definitely been somebody that I have been just dying to pick her brain to figure out what they're doing over on that team um, to have all the success but it's success that's like leg it's legacy success it's lasting success it's not um, you know this you know huge breakout and then there's no meat behind it she has some incredible incredible ideas and she's one of the best trainers that I have ever personally listened to so I am so honored that she is on our call tonight, and I hope that you guys have a pen and paper ready and um, are ready to take in what she has to say, because she's going to talk to us a little bit tonight about onboarding and duplication, um, some topics that I think are just, um, they're so important to our business. So, um, Brooke, take it away. Um, we'd love to hear just everything you have to say. Okay, guys. Well, aloha. You could say aloha back to me. I won't hear you, but aloha. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, thank you so much for having me on this call. I just, when I hear that stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes me so nervous because I don't feel like I'm doing anything that different from what I was taught. And I learned so much from you when I was just starting out as the silver and gold and senior gold ambassador. And that's the beauty of this business is we all learn from other people and we all take bits and pieces of things that other people do. And maybe we just put a little bit of a spin on it or we do a different, but tweak it just a little bit and it's just right for us. And so if you are looking at what other people are doing and you're like, it's not really quite my style, you can take what they have and you can tweak it just a little bit and make it your own and it might be magic for your team or for your small group of people that you're just starting out with. So, um, you know, a lot of the things that I'll talk about tonight are not necessarily like super groundbreaking, but maybe I'll say it in a different way, or maybe we do it a little bit differently and it'll help you in your business. So just a little bit about me. I am definitely just your every, every day person. I am sitting in my laundry room, nursing my baby right now. You can't see, but you know, my kids are all home. They just came home from school and I've got six kids running around. And so there might be somebody come in here. I'm hoping not, but this is just real life. And um, this is something that I believe anybody can do, but not everybody will do. And I feel like no matter what training you get, um, what calls you listen to, you have to have a certain amount of grit and a certain amount of determination to do this. And so I know you all have that within you. You just have to dig a little deeper to find that grit and to decide, okay, nothing's gonna stop me. And today is a perfect example, right? New back office, new website. I'm sure you guys could raise your hands and probably half of you can't get on your website, can't get in your back office, right? Any nods? Yes, okay. I can get in one of my three. So uh, that's a win. I can get in one. But, you know, it happened and I felt so calm about it today because I've been through this already before. I joined in September of 2015. The back office changed in October. Then there was a website change. Then there were shipping delays. There was like thing after thing after thing. And I, I could have just thrown my hands up in the air and been like, this is just taking way too much of my time. This is just way too complicated. Why can't this company get it together? Right? I could have had every excuse in the book to just quit. But I knew inside of me, and I believe that there was something really special about our company. I knew that I was feeling good. I knew that I believed in the products, even though my knowledge wasn't that great at the time. And so I just decided I was going to stick through it and I was going to remain positive. And so, you know, before we get into the nuts and bolts, I want to encourage you guys to remain positive because you really don't have any other choice right? And the way that you posture yourself and present yourself to your customers and ambassadors and your team is everything. So if you're positive and you help them feel at ease, guess what? 
everything is going to be fine in another week or two it's going to be no problem we're going to be into thanksgiving we're going to be rocking and rolling with black fridays or pink friday specials and all that kind of stuff so it's all good everyone just take a deep breath about all that okay so um so my journey was pretty fast i joined in um, september of 2015 i went diamond in september of 2016 and i re-entered in february and I'm crossing my fingers for Emerald this month or next month on my re-entry. Now we'll see, cause you know, the back office is a little bit of a mess, but if it doesn't happen this month, it's okay, it'll happen next month. Now I have gone at that speed because I've had incredible people join us, me, and I can't take credit for everything, but hopefully some of the things that we'll talk about will help you. And they're simple, simple things that everybody can apply to their business. And you don't have to be someone that has a gigantic network. My network was really quite small when I started. I had about 150 Facebook friends. I live in a town of about 2,500 people on an island of 65,000 people. I am an introvert. I um, pretty much like to stay to myself because I just, I'm kind of shy that way. I can get up and talk in front of people and stuff, but I refresh myself by being alone, not by being out, you know, amongst a bunch of people. That kind of wears me down and, and makes me feel shy and turn inwards. So if I can do this, you guys can do this. And my first tip to you would be to be a lifelong learner, to always be engaged in learning. I am constantly engaged in learning still because I had to learn from scratch like you guys how to be a network marketer, how to do it professionally. I had to learn about the products and the ingredients so that I could learn to sound like an expert. It doesn't matter that I'm a nurse. It really doesn't matter one bit. You can sound like an expert and be an expert on these products without having any kind of medical degree. Um, you can be a network marketing expert if you simply dive into it and study each and every week at least one or two new concepts or things that will help you to grow your business and i promise you if you fit that into the nuts and bolts of your day while you're folding laundry driving to pick up your kids cooking dinner doing the dishes all these monotonous tasks that we have to do every day if you can fill that time with knowledge building activities and videos you are just going to soar and i feel like that was invaluable to me as I was growing my business, not only in building my knowledge, but also in building my belief and keeping me excited and keeping me fed. Just like we have to be spiritually fed, physically fed, we have to be fed by things that uplift us and strengthen our belief and our knowledge in this business. So I just want to put that little plug in there. Second thing is don't ever give up and don't tire of doing the basics posting on Facebook, but not over posting, you know, the new algorithms and, and the way that you really want to do it is you don't really want to have more than one third of your content be about Plexus. And you actually don't even want to say Plexus every time you post about Plexus. So a lot of times you'll see me posting and I might mention supplements or I'll just talk about how I felt before and how I feel now. And I haven't necessarily said anything about Plexus, but I am showing people what my life is like and attracting them to me just by you know, talking about those things without throwing it in their face. And so don't tire of posting and sharing with people what you're doing. Don't tire of reaching out to people and following up with people. I think I was laughing today because I was talking to Emily Gibson, who's been my power partner from the beginning. And um, I was laughing because I had two people like just totally cancel their accounts today like two people that are like newer people and and one of them just signed up like a week and a half ago and i'm like what is wrong with people like they got their products and they decided they didn't open the box they decided they were going to cancel it and we were just laughing because we were like i think people think that we have like a magic touch and like this stuff doesn't happen to us but it happens to us right sarah we have people like shut off cancel their accounts return their stuff all the time but the thing is we keep going and and we keep following up with more people and reaching out to more people because there is no magic behind her or i and why we are where we are we just had some grit and we just kept reaching out to people even through the hard days when we're like what is wrong with people so that was my day today but i actually i feel pretty good about it because i know tomorrow's a new day and it's another chance so, um, you know, talking a little bit about systems and onboarding people, there are a couple of different things that I feel like 
help tremendously with retention and onboarding people. And I talked a little bit about this in the Diamonds training, but the first thing I feel is so important for retention and onboarding people starts before they even sign up. And that is with being completely transparent and honest with people. So never promising that this is going to be something miraculous for them. Never promising results that you can't promise. Being hopeful with them, but being honest and open with them and saying, this is really something that I want you to commit three to six months to. Do you guys say that or are you just getting them on the products for 30 days? Because I'm always like three to six months of consistency. And if you're not ready to give it at least three to six months, I don't think right now is the right time for, for you to start. And that usually gives people like a second to pause. And it's almost like that fear of missing out and they don't want to miss out. And they're like, wait a second. She really is serious about me getting healthier and feeling better. So I'm going to be serious about it too. And I'm going to commit to it. So we've had that discussion before they ever even start. So they know I'm in it for the long haul with them and they're in it for the long haul. Another thing that you want to do when they start out is just have them get a little notebook or a pad of paper or a journal or something and have them list all of their troublesome symptoms, like all of the things that they're struggling with before they even start and have them every like week or every month go back to that, that original list because people, I can tell you this being a personal trainer for a lot of years is that most people are not in touch with their body. They are not in tune with their body. They don't notice like if they're feeling better or not. They, they have no idea. So if you don't make them write down every single troublesome, weird symptom or, or thing that they would like changed, when you ask them how they're doing, if they haven't lost 10 pounds, they think nothing has happened. But you say, go back to that list. And is there anything that you can cross off of that list? And they'll be like, oh yeah, my, the arches of my feet don't hurt anymore. My knees aren't sore anymore. And um, I don't wake up with a throbbing head every morning now. So they, on their own, start going back and crossing off the things that are troubling them. Okay? And that's going to help them to see the non-scale victories. Because let's face it, a lot of people join, even though they don't tell you it's for weight, they want to lose weight. And we're always constantly trying to get them to remember. And this way they can snap a picture as well of all of their ailments and the things that are bothering them, send it to you. So you have record of it as well. So you can remember, okay, this is what they started out with. And this is what we're working towards three to six months. And then I tell them before we even start, you're not allowed to go dark on me. Like, don't go dark on me. We got to communicate. I kind of joke about it. And even though I say that, you're always going to have a certain percentage of people that are very private that, that they do go dark on you and they don't communicate with you. With those people for onboarding them and helping with retention, I still feel like it's important to have the same follow-up schedule with them. And even if they're not responding, send them some kind of helpful information or tip based on what you think might be happening or where you think they should be adjusting their products to help them. And just you know, just putting it out there to still try and help them. Um, I have, you know, a lot of people use Lexi and you guys might use Lexi. Are, do you guys mo mostly use Lexi? Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't yet. It just hasn't been something that I've used yet. Um, so whether you use Lexi or not, um, if you're someone that likes to use a planner for follow-up, I do 3, 7, 14, 21, and after their first um, convenience order. That's my follow-up schedule. And so if, if you're not on the app yet and you, you feel like follow-up is your weakness, maybe this is something that will help you. Because um, while some of you might do Lexi, some of you, that may not speak to you right now. And I'm not saying I'll never do it. I just don't do it yet. I'm a bad diamond. <laughs> but um, I just, I have a planner. I'm a pen and paper girl. 3, 7, 14, 21, and after their first convenience order, yep. So that's when I touch bases with them. And what I do is the very day they start their products, um, I write their name in my planner. Then immediately I turn it three days forward. I write their name and then put a three next to it. Then I turn it to seven days after they start. Write their name, put a seven. Turn it to 14 days after. Write their name, put a 14. You guys get the point, right? So that when I open my planner for the next day, I know, oh, I need to touch bases with Sarah today. This is day 14 for her. And if you want to write a little note after you talk to her, you can put like two, two PB5, 
three BC, two slims. Like you can write down what they're on so that you remember the next time you talk to them. Now that's just a simple way that I've done it. And I have a girl that's grown super, super fast. Um, went Ruby, well, Ruby in five months, that was pretty good, I felt. And she's using that system and it works great for her. But if Lexi is working for you, do that. The main thing is you've got to follow up. And you've got to follow up at least four times in that first month, those four touches. And then I, I tried to, not to follow up for like the week before their convenience order, unless they're having a lot of struggles and I need to talk, be talking to them more often because I honestly want their convenience order to process. I don't want to talk, reach out to them the day before and have them decide, wait, maybe I don't want it. I want it to process because I know that the first month is just a figure it out month, right? It's just figuring it out. And so we want that convenience order to go through. So that's how I first set them up for success. Um, also, uh, there are a couple of key questions that I ask everybody when they start. I ask them um, what their water intake is like. I ask them how often they poop every day. I, you know, I ask them some basic questions that's going to help me to start them on the right amount of BioCleanse and ProBio5 because we don't want people like running to the bathroom, having accidents, or being constipated. Like there are basic questions, guys, and ask people a little bit about their diet. You don't have to be a nutritionist to know that you shouldn't be eating chips and salsa at 10 o'clock at night, or you shouldn't be drinking three Dr. Peppers a day. Ask them a little bit about their diet before they even start the supplement so that you can give them a couple simple tips that's going to help them to have better results. So diet, water, and poop. That's basically what we talk about before they start. Um, Another thing that I feel like is so important, and I'm sure you guys do this, is enrolling people over the phone. And it gives such better customer service. And it really, if you just think about it in those terms, about just giving great service, helping to walk somebody through a website is the best service you can get. It feels personal, and you can get past any objections with subscriptions, with um, what to order, they might have additional questions, but also at the end of that phone conversation, always, always comes the question, as we've talked about these supplements and we've gotten your products ordered, have you thought of anybody else in your life that this would be good for? And, and just being on the phone and having that rapport and just asking them that simple question, oftentimes people are going to say, yeah, I think my sister could use this or my best friend. And that becomes a perfect time for you to say, great. Um, you know, if I sent you a little message to send to them just to see if they're interested to find out about it, would you want to do that? And they almost always say, sure, I could do that. And so I'm a huge believer in scripting. Sarah knows this. I feel like um, I needed the words put into my mouth when I started. So I watched a lot of videos or I would ask Amy, you know, what should I say? And I have found that if I show people the words to say before they can even say yes or no, they will, they will usually do it. So if we are in Messenger and they've signed up um, already, I didn't really have a chance to ask them that. I will write up the message for them and say, hey, how do you feel about sending this message to, you know, so-and-so that you were telling me about? When they see the message and they see that it's not salesy, it's not scary, it's just a normal conversational message, 90% of the time they're going to say, yeah, sure, I could do that. And so we're starting that duplication process from the very beginning. Now, if you are someone that is scared to do this, it's going to feel hard at first and it's going to feel a little bit scary, but you'll never get better at it until you do it. You've just got to try like the first two, three, four times. It might feel a little bit unnatural, but fake it till you make it. That's what my mom taught me. And, and I went through the same thing. Like you just got to fake it till you make it. And now when I talk to someone, I was like, oh my gosh, you're so smooth. How did you get them to share? It's like, it's not magic. I just have tried over and over and over and you make it sound normal. And I don't make it at all about going silver. I don't talk about going silver because a new ambassador doesn't know what that term means. That doesn't mean anything to them and it feels very businessy. So instead of saying, Hey, let's get you to go silver and get your products paid for. Well, that would have never encouraged me to share honestly, but someone saying, Hey, 
have you thought of anybody that these products could help as we've talked about them? I would have said, yeah, I, I can think of a bunch of people. Well, how about this message? And I would have looked at it and been like, yeah, I, I could do that. And then later on, we can talk about how that's going to pay for my products. We don't always have to talk about that in the very beginning. Now you can read your people. If you've got someone that's a red and they're joining for the business and they just want to kill it. You can run with those people and that's super fun. Like Sarah will tell you, it's really fun when you get those people that are willing and like wanting, but honestly guys, 99% of people are not that way. So what are you going to do to grow your team and duplicate? You've got to reach out to those people that you can help go silver or um, senior silver, like somewhere in between silver and gold. There are so many people like that, that you can get to share a little bit and it can get you to your next rank. You do not have to have a team full of rock stars. You don't, I mean, it helps. And I would say Emily is definitely a rock star, but I have tons of points and tons of people outside of her, silvers, golds, senior golds, rubies, because people like to help other people. And ultimately people do like to not have to pay for their products. And once they see that they're not gonna have to pay for their products, and they're seeing other people around them get results, then that encourages them. The other terminology for duplication that I have used and I really like is asking people right off the bat from the beginning. So if I'm on the phone with them, maybe this particular person, I'm not gonna ask who they know that, could, that it could help. Maybe I feel like this person, I need to ask them to get an accountability partner. And so I'll say to them, you know, Stacy, I really feel like you need an accountability partner. Yeah, I can send you some scripts. I'll send them to Sarah. Um, I really feel like you need an accountability partner or two to be successful on this journey. Who do you think could be your accountability partner? Someone that you can check in with every week that can be on the supplements with you that also needs a change in their life. So um, if you get people to think about just one person that can be their accountability partner, it's kind of like a chain reaction. They think of one and they're probably gonna think of a second. And then once they've got two, then you're gonna say, you know what, if you just have one more person, Melissa, like one more person, you actually are gonna get this great $100 bonus. It's called a silver bonus. Can you think of one more person? So it's like just helping them dip their toes in. And then like I have a girl like this on my re-entry, she's my level two. And that's how we started out with her. And now she has six or seven people under her because she just keeps, thinking of people and I didn't push her into it. It didn't feel like I was trying to make her do the business, but I feel like if you pulled most of us diamonds, we would say that this was an accidental business for us. And it, it's not, I don't want to use the word trick, but it's kind of like, you're just like helping them to like dip into the business just enough that those people that are like us, are going to like catch a hold of it and realize, oh my gosh, this is amazing. People really do need these products and people really do need this opportunity. And I can think of a whole bunch more people. So, um, so those are the ways that I get people sharing early on. And then of course, if they're willing to do that, I will ask them um, about doing a shout out. And I, I don't know, are you guys doing a shout out contest? I know you probably saw that. Um, no. Okay. So, I was running one day a year ago and I thought, you know, asking people to share on Facebook feels so formal. And for some people that like seems like a huge step. But if I just ask Susie, hey Susie, will you give me a shout out on Facebook? And will you just share my story of what Plexus has done for me? I know you don't have your own testimonial yet and you're not really interested in the business, but I know there are so many other people out there like me that are gonna relate to my story and I'd love to be able to reach those people. So I, so we're doing a shout out contest right now on my page. It's okay, buddy. See, there's one kid, that's pretty good. I got like 25 minutes without an interruption. But um, you know, so we're doing a shout out contest and all these people that have small teams are asking their ambassadors and customers to give them shout outs. And it's the law of averages. It's working. I mean, they have like maybe 15 ambassadors and three, four, five of them are saying, yes, these are people that have never posted before that are giving a shout out. And now these people are in three way conversations because what I say then is, you know, Hey, if you have anybody that's interested, don't worry about it, I'll do all the heavy lifting and you're just gonna connect us in a three-way message. 
and then I take over from there or the ambassador that's the sponsor takes over from there. So you don't have to have a shout out contest to do that, but you could just start employing that in your own business. Like once the person gets their product, this could be the next step. You say, hey, Lori, now that you have your products, I'm wondering if you could help me out with something. Could you give me a shout out? So, um, so that's another way to duplicate and get people to start sharing. Um, the other thing, am I talking too much? <laughs> like, blah, blah, blah. I feel like I'm just talking so much. No, we're loving it. <laughs> loving okay. it so. um, the other thing that has been super important for me is, and maybe this doesn't matter for you guys, because maybe you are a rock star sponsor and you sponsor 10, 15, 20 people a month. That is not me. I did that in the beginning. I could sponsor five, 10, uh, five to 10 people a month, like solid for my first maybe six months or so. And then it kind of started to slow down. And now my goal is silver every month. So um, in my re-entry, I have about 28 or 30 level ones. I re-entered in February. So I haven't been like killing it with sponsoring, just a steady pace. But what I have really focused on is the concept of tap rooting. And this is, the, this is what really excites me. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with that concept, but um, it's the idea of reaching through your level ones to your level twos to try and find that gold that's in your level twos. And I feel like a lot of times in this business, there are, there are some people that train on, you know, just work with your level ones, just, just go with the people that really want to do the business and just work with those people. And I think that's all great and awesome if you have a ton of influence and a huge network and tons of level ones, but you're looking at a girl over here that's had to create her network and that just was not going to work for me. Okay. So that's why I like to be connected to all of my new level twos that my level ones personally sponsor. It does not take a lot of time, guys. But if you start doing this and you start connecting to your level twos and just give them the scripting of how to introduce the person to you, so they're just introducing you as friends, like you're at a, a cocktail party and you just go over there and grab Sarah and, hey, hey, Sarah, I want you to meet my friend Melissa. She's so awesome. I love her story. I thought you could relate to it. And Melissa is such an expert on the products. I feel like she's going to give you some great feedback. So you just introduce each other in um, three-way message and we start chatting back and forth. And guess what? Eventually, if you're too shy to share the opportunity, if you're too shy to ask somebody to share, guess what? I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna be that third party validation and I'm gonna come in and say, um, hey Sarah, I, I know you just started your products and you're really liking the pink drink. I'm wondering if you could help, help us out and give Melissa a shout out and just share Melissa's story on Facebook. I have done this a couple times this week and had people say, sure, I could do that. And they do a shout out. So if you're struggling with duplication and you just feel like, I cannot ask people, I just, I can't do it. It's too far outside of my comfort zone. Tell your sponsor, this is really hard for me. Can you help me out in three-way messages and show me how to do this? And so um, basically in tap rooting, I am looking for those people that are having good results, that are loving their products, that are willing to share. And I'm tapping into those people and working with them as if they were my level ones. And I've had a couple of examples of this. I have a level one that's great, but she didn't want to share for her first couple months. But her sister-in-law under her had great results fast, and she started sharing. And she's enrolled about 15 to 25 people every single month since June. And she went Ruby um, last month. And after a couple of months, her sister-in-law, who's her sponsor, caught the vision and had that fear of missing out. And she decided, I better get on this train and start working the business. And she also is Ruby and is personally sponsoring really well and working the business. Now, if I had sat back and said, I am just going to do three-way messages with my level ones. I don't have time to do them with my level twos. I would have missed out on about 220 new ambassadors on my re-entry because she's duplicating the same exact thing down to her people. And so guys, don't be, don't be too busy to think that you, you can't reach out to those level twos because you could be reaching, you could be missing out on some really fantastic people. And I feel like what this does is it helps you to build really strong roots. Your roots are going to go deeper 
and um, that tree is going to be stronger from the bottom up. Now, I don't go like three, four, five levels deep because I can't do that. But, you know, depending on your size, maybe you are going to work with your level threes that are really strong. It just depends on your size and where you're at. But um, that has been something that's helped with duplication and fast growth without having to sponsor a million level ones. Because it's just not something at this point in my business that I am doing. I won't say it'll never happen again, but it's not happening right now. Um, so anyways, going a little bit more into like retention. I feel like once you get people um, enrolled and started and you're doing that good follow-up, you really have to plug people in. They have got to be plugged in. And Sarah told me you guys are starting your seven-day challenge this week. You probably have training groups. Um, you know, we all do these trainings as diamonds and jewels to help our teams. We set these things up and put them in place. And all you have to do is show up. You bring the people to these events, you plug them in and it's there. It's like plug and play. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And I've had such interesting experiences with this and, and maybe you can relate to this because maybe this has been you. Maybe you haven't utilized events, Facebook events, Zooms or seven day challenges because you don't really believe in them. You don't think that they work very well. Well, I would challenge you to change your mindset on them and to really dive into them and take a look at these events that your sponsors are putting on and participate in them and you will see your businesses grow tremendously. I had a girl the other month that reached out to me and she was like, I don't know what you're doing differently in these seven day challenges, but they're amazing. All of my people that were in it signed up and I was just laughing inside because we weren't doing anything different. It was the same format, but she had to change her mindset and actually really work and use that event to bring people in. The only thing we change are the testimonials. We change those out every month. So it's not the same, you know, same exact thing every day. But gosh, guys, if you will just utilize what's there for you and plug people in, your business will explode tremendously. The other way that I use these events, the seven day challenges, Facebook events and Zooms, is for new ambassadors and customers. Um, even though they're already signed up, if they joined in the last 30 days, I will ask them, hey, would you like to participate in our seven day challenge? It would be so great for you to understand the products a little, little bit more. Plus we have product giveaways and if you participate, you can be entered to win these giveaways. I like everybody, not just potentials. I like all my new people to be in these because it builds belief. And people that are new need that belief. But the other thing is they see how great the seven day challenge is, how it's so simple, it's not super salesy, and they start seeing more testimonials and thinking, well, you know, maybe I know somebody that I could put in this next time. So then the next time I'll ask them, hey, you know, I know you did the seven day challenge last month. We're doing it again this month. Do you have anybody in mind that, that might like to do it and just purchase a seven day trial pack from me? And I, as as their sponsor, I always keep 10 seven day trial packs on hand in my drawer, always. I don't necessarily make people go to the website and mess around with a retail purchase of getting a trial pack because it's an extra step. And you and I both know that sometimes it's hard to just get people on the website, right? So um, I will tell my level one, you know, I've got some seven day trial packs sitting around. Do you have anybody in mind that uh, might benefit from joining in that might like this? And if they say yes, I give them the message to send out. And if they get a couple of people, I will personally send that seven day trial pack out and then they'll then mail me or PayPal me 20 bucks. And I help them go to sell for that way. And it's just, it's just helping them. Now, not everybody's willing to do this kind of stuff. They think like, well, I don't want to do that or I don't want to work that hard. I just want to, I want them to do it. Why aren't they doing it? Because they don't know how to do it. They need you to show them how to do it. And they need you to cast a little vision. And they need to believe in the products more. And they need to actually believe that other people want what they have. And if you don't help them to see that, you know, you're gonna lose a lot of people that maybe could have been great. So, um, so I'll do that as well. But plugging people in is so, so important. Um, for duplication, I feel like these things are really simple. Because if you teach your people how to follow up 3, 7, 14, 21 after their convenience order, you teach them how to plug people in, 
you have a couple set scripts for how to ask people to share, how to ask people to do a shout out, how to ask people to do a post. You just have these scripts saved in the notes of your phone. Like I'm sure you've been taught. I've got all these things just saved in my phone and I can copy and paste. And of course I tell them, please make it personal. You don't want to sound like Brooke. You want to sound like you, but this is an example of what you could send. But how simple is that? If you actually just employed those things, how much more successful you be in your business. Guys, this is not rocket science. It really isn't. And the cure for any, any kind of being stuck or anything, the, the cure to that ailment is just activity. It's activity. If you're in a slump, it's just sitting down, committing to an hour a day of actual work, not scrolling through Facebook, not being active in, in um, your team page, not um, just adding friends, but like actually doing IPA type activities um, and building your network. That's the cure to what ails you is that activity. And then just employing these sort of strategies to duplicate. And that's what we've taught our team. And that's, I feel like that's why we've had good momentum and good growth because we're not teaching them that they have to be a total expert in the products or that um, they have to do you know, this and this and this and that. It's like the same events every month with a little bit of a twist to make it still interesting and a little bit different. Just enough to keep it interesting, but not so much to confuse them and teaching them this system and then duplicating it down. So I don't know. I feel like, <laughs> do you have any questions? No, I think, oh my gosh, I got so much. I wrote so many notes and I absolutely love the way that you think, especially about um, giving them the scripts and giving, I've always shied away from scripts because I have always kind of felt like we use them in, in the beginning and here's kind of where my thinking, you know, even as a diamond guys, like we're constantly changing up the way we do things because I did it in the beginning and then started to think, okay, maybe it's too scripted. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being too, um, you know, type A with this, or they're taking it and being, um, they're, they're not being themselves. But at the end of the day, you're so right about the duplication. Like it helps them to just know, it puts them at ease to just know what to say and how to message that person. And oh, I, like, I love that idea. I did have a question on, mm -hmm. um, the tap rooting. I love that concept and that word that you use there to describe it. And I think as a team, we've always focused really hard on our levels one through three. We're not a team that does just level ones, but I am actually interested to hear how, so when you message these level twos and start to grow the um, relationship through the uh, three-way chat, is most of the relationship building and most of the chat going forward in that three-way chat, or do you take it out of that three-way chat as well, or how does that work? I keep it in there. I keep it in there with my level one so that they're also learning as well because I want them to learn how I'm building this relationship and I want them to see how I celebrate their victories on the products, how I troubleshoot their difficulties, how I get them to share. Um, and then when this new level two gets potentials, I am then in the group message for their potentials. And I stay in, so there's four of us and, and it might seem like a lot, but I stay with them just for a little while, like for the first month maybe. And then after that, I'm like, okay, Barbie and Phyllis, you guys got this. You are so ready to do this on your own. You don't need me anymore. So I, I do hold their hand in the beginning, but if I hadn't have done that, like with Phyllis or this other girl, Julia, that I have, if I hadn't have done that, like I would, I would not have most of my reentry leg. So I feel like when you find those people, that you can connect with in those messages, go for it. And don't, don't be afraid to be inconvenienced. Yeah, it's a little bit inconvenient, but it's worth it. And then eventually they're strong enough to do it on their own. Well, I think it goes back to the relationship too. We talk a lot on our team about a goal-driven leadership versus relational leadership and building that connection. And um, I think that that really just kind of adds to that. And it really lets the level two know that, you know, they've got more than one person. They've got a, a, a team of people that are really interested and invested in, in helping them. Um, Teresa asked um, what, 
do you do if a level one is resistant to starting the three-way chat with their level two? Has that ever happened to you or? Um, I try to find out why. Like, you know, you gotta try and find out why, and maybe it's just that they don't know how what to say. So maybe it's just a problem of they think it's gonna you're gonna come off salesy or they're worried like about what you're gonna say to them. And if you just tell them um, it's just so that I can share my story and help them to get started on their products and to celebrate their successes and to help them with troubleshooting so that they have a clear understanding of what it's gonna be. And you say to them, it has nothing, like I tell people all the time, I'm like, it has nothing to do with your competence. Like you're amazing and you're competent, but people have this need for connection. And, and that third party validation is so important. And I'll usually send them like a video on third party validation, like Bob Heilig has a good one. So I'll send them that video because they need to hear from somebody else that what I'm telling them to do is important. That them being the expert is not the most important thing. It's because it's not. And then if they still don't do it, I, you know, I mean, I can't force everybody. Not everybody does this, but there is a clear difference, guys night and day on my reentry between the people that do it and the people that don't and how successful they are. And I'm not saying it's because I'm amazing or anything, but third party validation and having that extra person in there is so, so helpful. Absolutely. I, I, I do. That connection is just so key. It's such a big part and it's such a big part about, um, I mean, people want, they, they become self-motivated when they become more connected. And That's true. Uh, it, it's just an inherent part of, of how our minds think and work. It builds loyalty, guys. It really builds loyalty. And loyalty is one of my, like in my Myers-Briggs, like loyalty is one of my like main things that's most important. I really feel like I have a team that is so loyal. I'm not saying that people won't leave, but it's not a problem at least not yet, because I feel like we're creating a culture of people that are so loyal because we're creating a culture of servant leadership. We're like, you know what? I'm not too good to help you. I'm going to help you and I'm going to help you tap into your level lens. And we have this incredible loyalty and that has to do with relationships. So, you know, it may seem like a lot of work, but really if you ride someone hard and you train them hard and you're in their messages for a month, now they're just, they're soaring by themselves. They don't hardly need me. They still introduce me to them, but like I watch them do their troubleshooting and stuff and I'm like, okay, now you don't need me. So if you really invest in them solid for a period of time and they show you results, then you're going to work with them. But if you're investing in them solid and they're not showing you anything, then you do have to move on, right? Because you can't keep dragging people along. But the only way you're going to find out if they're going to go for it is if you work with them. So. I love that. Well, thank you, Brooke. I feel like just everybody on the call is like, oh my gosh, so many light bulb moments. And we're so uh -huh. grateful for your time uh, tonight. I just adore you. And I love listening to you teach. <laughs> uh, thank I love you. all of your ideas. Um, Thank you. But we would love those scripts. I'm sure um, I'll get them from you. Um, but we're going to, we got to go ahead and hop off because Brooke and I actually have another call after this. <laughs> um, we're doing one for her team too. So um, we've got to hop off and just thank you for everybody on my team for coming tonight. Um, we really appreciate it. And I'm sure we'll have a lot more discussions to follow after this too. So good night guys. Yeah. Thank you guys. Bye. Thanks for having me. Have a good night.